Okay, uh, there we go. We're off. Uh, welcome, everyone. Again, uh, thank you from, from me and Alina and the rest of the team uh, for being here in mid-July at a cloud webinar. Uh, we're happy to have you here, especially because uh, we have some big news. We had a Percival release on Monday. Um, so Eric is along. If you have any specific technical questions, uh, I will do my best, uh, but Eric is is our man. Uh, we'll introduce him a bit more later. And we also have some developments on the cloud, which I'll talk to you about, uh, specifically the introduction of cloud notebooks, which is something we've been working on for a while with uh, with Mario and the development team. Voila. So we shall continue. Let me know, uh, shout at me if there's any technical bugs as well. Um, it looks, everything looks smooth on my end though. So cool. So the people who are here today, uh, we have the the classics. We have Alina, our content and invention manager. Um, she's uh, been coordinating all of the Eventbrite things that you see and and the content that we have here as well. There's me, your humble host. Uh, I am Jason. When you send cloud support messages, I am typically the first person who, who will see that and who will try and help you or point you in the right direction. So I'm happy to be here and actually uh, engage with you in a, in a more human way. It's very nice. We have Maxence, our IT uh, specialist, who is making sure that this is all running smoothly. Without him, uh, Zoom and, and our call would not be possible. And Eric, of course, who we already talked about, he's our senior scientific developer. Um, but what this means in practice is he uh, does a ton of great work developing Percival so that you can have the best experience possible. Um, it's most useful for you as it can be, and uh, it fits into whatever workflow and uh, needs that you have. So uh, we're, we're really happy to have him along today uh, for the webinar. We will lay the ground rules as usual. Um, so the webinar is recorded. Uh, as, as always, uh, that said, we ask that if there's any confidential information that you want to share, please do not, <laughs> because uh, it is recorded and it will be shared on YouTube afterwards. Uh, there is the chat for chatting, as we've been using it a bit already. There's also the Q&A if you want to ask a question uh, at any point during the uh, webinar, and I will either respond right away or we can respond at the end of the Q&A session. Uh, but feel free to ask at any point and also to raise your hand if you want to speak. If there's someone else on the panel team can unmute you and we can have a, a bit of a conversation, uh, which is always nice. And last but not least, we've never had this issue before, but do be respectful. So there we go. A bit of an overview on the content, uh, press, events, community. I hate these kinds of slides, but I do it because we need to. And uh, here you go, just to give you an idea. Press, events, community. Then we're gonna talk about, first of all, in cloud releases, as we already mentioned a bit. Some science news, which some of you may be aware of already. A big archive paper that we released on our recent work. We'll talk more about that. A live demo. Uh, we pray it doesn't break. It shouldn't. I tested it. And uh, Q&A. Uh, at the end if we haven't uh, addressed all of your questions already. So the first big press news that we want to talk about is Quandela's Uzine. Uh, some of you may have seen this on LinkedIn. You may have heard about it. Uh, you may be following us on other social media platforms, Twitter and the likes, uh, or you might know us in person, uh, but we are very proud to announce that we have opened our uh, first Uzine, our first factory uh, in Massey. Uh, this is an article from Les Echo, uh, which is a French uh, journal. And if we do a quick Google Translate on this, Quandela becomes Quenella, which I thought was quite funny <laughs> for the French speakers out there. Uh, but the rest of the translation is fairly correct. Um, so we've inaugurated our first quantum computer factory. Uh, and it's not only our first, uh, but it is the first uh, within Europe, within the EU. Uh, so we're quite proud about that. Uh, it was a very big event. Uh, I'd like to give a big, huge shout out to Alina, who's with you today, uh, because she was involved in a lot of this coordination, a lot of the event management, um, making sure people knew what they needed to do, how they needed to do it, when they needed to do it. And um, and it was really great. Some of the people who we had along would be Jean-Noël Bau, uh, Minister Delegate for Digital Transition and Telecommunications in English, um, Nicolas Dufourc, um, he would be the CEO of BPI France. Uh, BPI France is an organization that uh, supports a lot of small, medium enterprises and technology within France. Um, so he's a very important person to have along, as well as we know him, we love him, Alan Aspe, 
Nobel Prize uh, in Physics 2022, who's also on our scientific advisory board. Um, and he came along to, to see what was going on and uh, why and how. Um, to give a bit of info, because I've seen the I've seen the new labs as well. They are big. Um, it is a tremendous upgrade from the labs that we had before. It's 400 square meters, and uh, it's much nicer for the engineering team. It makes workflows more effective, more efficient, uh, with the goal of producing bigger and better technology. So, for example, uh, a quote from Valerian, our CEO, uh, during the event was, uh, "Our ambition is to double the number of qubits accessible." through the cloud and to deliver the first quantum computer to OVH before the end of the year. And an Uzin, a factory like this is what makes it possible um, to, to actually scale things up in a meaningful way as we move forward. Uh, so I can't overstate the importance of this and, uh, and, and we're very proud of it. And uh, a big shout out to all of the engineering teams and business people who helped coordinate this. We shall continue to upcoming events. Uh, so we don't have a lot happening over the summer as most people don't, uh, but there is one thing to look forward to next week. Uh, if you happen to be going to Quantum Physics and Logic Conference happening somewhere Institute Henri Poincaré um, in Paris. This is a conference based around research on mathematical foundations of quantum computing, quantum physics, and and related fields. So it's a very theoretical, uh, technically minded conference, uh, but we will have some representation there, uh, especially uh, to mention Nicolas Rotel and Pierre Emmanuel, um, whom you can see on, on this screen somewhere uh, as one of our accepted talk submissions. If the title of their talk makes sense to you, uh, definitely go check it out. And if it doesn't, then there's room to learn. Uh, as well, on the Thursday, uh, between 4 and 5 p.m., there is an industry session, an industry session uh, which, we will, uh, which we will be at. So if you happen to be going, do come by, say hi. Everyone's very friendly from Quandela, I can assure you. And uh, we're happy to discuss uh, any questions or ideas or whatever you might have. But uh, we're looking forward to that next week. A quick note on some community news. So this is a slide that may look familiar to you if you came to the last webinar because it is fairly similar, but actually better uh, in as much as uh, this 125 number last time was 56. So between the first and second webinar, we had 56 new cloud members and now we have 125 new cloud members since the last uh, webinar we had on the 20th of April. So we're very happy to see that um, the crowd is growing. A lot of this is due to our hackathon participation, for example, uh, making sure more students and academics uh, have access to this as well as some of our industry partners. And we can see that our, our, our base really is quite international. Again, something we're proud of. We, as, as Brian Siegelwax mentioned at the last webinar, we do want to democratize this, democratize this technology and make it accessible to people um, to well, to build it and to move forward in a meaningful way. On the right-hand side here, we see a plot of the cloud usage since the last webinar. Uh, so again, since April 20th. And uh, I'll note that a lot of this is from Quandela, the tests that we do, uh, as well as the research that we do, uh, especially the publication we'll talk about later. Some of these, some of this cloud time is also from our partners. So we had Brian Ventura, for example, last uh, last webinar, who spoke about his work at Sigma Reply and uh, the work that they're doing with Quandela, the simulations and the the actual QPU runs that they're doing. So there's some work from there, and 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 people like him. Again, hackathons, which we talked about, um, we talked about some that we went to. Um, at the last webinar, uh, again, I keep referencing that. There's a YouTube uh, link somewhere that will be sent around uh, to go look at, but uh, there's a lot of hackathon participation here. And then the last but not least, um, there are runs from people who we do not know who they are and we do not know what they are doing specifically. And this is nice because these are real people using the machine um, and, and not just uh, us and our cohort. Uh, so we're happy to see people actually engaging with the machine in a, in a slightly more broader context. Do we have any questions about the news part of the webinar before we continue to the first of all and cloud part of the webinar? No? Okay. 
Then without further ado, we shall introduce our Percival and Cloud news once I find my arrow. Excellent. So on Monday, uh, we released uh, the Percival 0 0.9. Uh, previously, it was Percival 0 0.8.1. Uh, we're, we're making big steps. This one is called King Pesher. Uh, a little bit of historical context. There's, there's a lot of different um, mythology and origins to this King Pesher story. So maybe Eric has a different one in mind, but I was doing some looking into it. Um, it was it was King Pesher who guarded, who was the last uh, guard of the Holy Grail. And although there are many variations of this story, uh, Percival is sometimes regarded as the the good knight who saves the kings from his, the king from his physical injuries along his quest for the Holy Grail. So we are continuing in our very Arthurian theme of uh, releasing Percival names and <laughs> software updates. Uh, so voila. Uh, there are release notes and documentation available. Uh, like I said, I'll be sending around this PowerPoint or Alina or someone will be sending around this PowerPoint uh, after the webinar and you'll have access to all of this. Uh, if you don't already know where the documentation is, you can click right there. The next four bullet points are bullet points which I lifted directly from the webinar too as things that we uh, hopefully promised for the next release of Percival. And we are happy to say that they are mostly done. <laughs> so for the first, uh, we have the batch jobs. Uh, we went back and forth on the naming for this for quite a while, but we settled on batch jobs. What this means is that you as a user can more easily submit jobs that have changing input states, uh, changing circuit parameters, changing uh, post-selection parameters. Uh, and while this is while this is, I guess, algorithmically not uh, a, a huge breakthrough, it is one which will allow you to gain a, a lot of time in the overhead of your job management. Um, you can have cleaner job lists. Uh, the way that you do your data analysis can be cleaned up a lot because you can send one job with varying parameters as a dictionary, I believe, um, and, uh, and, and, and then just let it run on the cloud while you do other things. And so it's quite a nice efficiency boost to the way that you interact with the cloud and one that we have been testing internally uh, with at Quandela and with our partners for a few months now. So uh, please do use it, try and break it, send me cloud support messages, we'll forward them to Eric uh, <laughs> and his team and things will move forward. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's quite nice. We've used it, we like it, we're sharing it and uh, we hope you use it as well. Again, the documentation is all there on how to use it. I won't be showing too much code today uh, because, uh, because it's online. The next uh, big release would be the integrated Jupyter Notebooks. So something that we wanted to, so this would be coming, sorry, from Mario's team uh, and the cloud software development team. And the idea of the integrated Jupyter Notebooks is that you can run notebooks directly through the cloud web page. So when you log in, there's a tab on the left, you click notebooks, you can run some preloaded notebooks and get started right away. Um, and it really helps to, to understand what's happening with the cloud and how things work without having to uh, do things locally on your machine. It's, uh, it's, it lowers the barrier to entry. We'll look more at this at the live demo later, um, but just uh, happy to say that this has been done and is, uh, and is a, a thing that you have access to now. So we have a question on the Q&A. Can batch jobs, so this would be one for Eric, he'll know best. Uh, can, can a batch job include completely different circuits or just one circuit with different parameters? Oh, the, hello, uh, the way it's implemented it's, uh, is uh, you have to define a circuit with uh, variable parameters and you can only uh, modify the value of this variable parameters. So it's not completely different uh, circuits, but the thing you gain too is that uh, we gain some time when applying the faces on the real actual hardware optical chip. And if it were if it were a completely different circuit, we would not gain this time. So, so yeah. Does that answer your question, uh, Brian? I think so. Well, well uh, it's been closed. Cool. We shall move forth. Um, so the counts to shots uh, for, for accurate billing, this is something which is ongoing. Uh, we'll come at some point, uh, so look forward to that. We'll discuss it more, maybe at the next webinar after the summer. We shall see. 
And then finally, process IDs for remote uh, for, for remote jobs for easier follow-up. Again, this is not a kind of mathematical uh, algorithmic leap, but it is something which can help you manage your workflow in a more meaningful way if you have a lot of jobs that are related to a particular experiment or, or algorithm or, or use case that you're developing. Um, you can tag these as process IDs. Documentation is, of course, as always, online. Other features. So beyond what we promised last time, uh, there are other features which have been included in the new uh, in the new update. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but uh, a list which maybe concerns the most of you as users. Uh, so the first would be uh, that Eric and his team have done a complete backend rewrite for distinguishable photons. Uh, I don't know exactly how much work went into that, but I imagine it was a whole ton of work. Um, so that's very good. I know there was a uh, inclusion from the theory team, the software team, the hardware team to make this possible. Uh, what this means is that noisy simulations are with the, with the improved noise model and the way that it's implemented in the software run at about a thousand times faster uh, for realistic kind of use cases that you will be, that you will be encountering. This is some tens of seconds uh, for six photons on runtime, depending on the precision uh, that you set uh, the simulations to run at. We have also reinstated polarized circuits. So this was something I believe was a part of Percival long ago, and then was not a part of Percival, and then is now a part of Percival again and works. And uh, so we're happy to have this back on, which means that you can, for example, run Grover's algorithm as a simulation. There is a caveat to this point. Our chips do not use polarization encoding. Our chips are path encoded. And uh, and so this is, it, although you might encode something in polarization on your simulation, you cannot directly implement this as a polarization encoded algorithm on the actual hardware, um, but that is okay. Uh, the tool we want to be used, first of all, as a tool, we want it to be as useful for as many people as possible. And uh, we realized that people were asking for polarization. And so, and so it works for you now. And then finally, uh, because Qiskit integration and Qtip integration is something that's been coming up more and more as well, uh, state vector converters have been uh, have been optimized, have been implemented uh, for better Qiskit integration. This is particularly useful if you are interested in algorithms which use cluster states or graph states. Excuse me. We have uh, new documentation on the Percival um, website sidebar, which is specifically related to this. It was work that was published by a couple of my colleagues, Philippe and Hawad, not too long ago. We talked about it at the last webinar, uh, the graph state work that they did. And a lot of this is available not only through their publication and the GitHub, but now also on the Percival webpage. Uh, so you can get, uh, get familiar with the state vector converters and how you can integrate your Qiskit uh, tools with Percival. And then, oh wait. So we've also increased the number of simulation modes from 63 to 256. This was a bug uh, found by our partner, uh, Brian, uh, over at Sigma Reply, sent it to us, uh, was tackled, and not only was it, was it fixed, but it was vastly improved. Uh, this is an improvement, again, which might be relevant to you if you are interested in graph state work and you need lots and lots of modes. Also, with the caveat, we don't have 256 modes on our chip yet, <laughs> but, uh, but for simulation purposes, uh, it is available. And then finally, two new examples on the Percival documentation, uh, the first being shortest path problem using Cubo uh, quadratic unconstrained binary optimization. Uh, this is your kind of typical shortest path problem on a graph. The work that was done that inspired this notebook uh, and, and came from the work uh, from the people who did it uh, was at the Locathon, the Linear Optical Quantum Computing Hackathon that we did last November, I believe, uh, when, when the cloud was launched. So there was a team there working on uh, these shortest path problems. They did a great job. Uh, we worked with them to develop a cloud notebook and uh, our Percival notebook. And now this is available on the documentation uh, with their credits and uh, fully functioning code. And then like we've talked about a couple of times already, the, the graph state implementations, uh, the work of Philippe and Khawad uh, that, 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 uh, that can help you not only get familiar with state vector converters, but also learn more about how to use graph states on uh, our optics, on our optical technology. I see we have a couple of chat messages. I'm gonna look very quickly. Ah, yes, thanks. <laughs> cool. So we'll move forward. 
Voila. As with all great API rewrites, there come a few breaking changes. Um, these are not uh, major breaking changes, uh, but things that you can uh, that you ought to be aware of uh, as 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 you move forward. If you receive any warnings or depreciation uh, notices, uh, ways that you interact with Percival, I uh, will say that uh, well, we are sorry that things break. This is the natural course of of life and programming and developing uh, enormous, huge Percival packages uh, that make the world a better place. So it's better that it happens now than later. All of this is thoroughly noted in the Percival documentation with how you need to alter your code should you encounter an issue. So the first thing is that state vector inputs, distinguishable photons, noisy simulations in general were moved to a new simulator class. Uh, why? Uh, technically, if you have more questions, Eric will be able to give you a better answer. But broadly speaking, uh, this was to reserve the backend class for, input, for pure um, input box states, and then the simulator class will be reserved more for noisy simulations. So if you are a user who was using the backend class, then you ought to consider uh, using the simulator class or, or using processors uh, that would be able to handle this instead. Uh, if these methods look familiar with, to you, if these function calls look familiar to you, uh, then you might want to update your code. Uh, so set post process has become set post selection. Clear post process, clear post process has become clear post selection. I believe there are depreciation warnings on this, so things will not break immediately, um, but these functions will be depreciated. So if you use these, uh, it's worth updating your code. And then finally, uh, the biggest change is that remote process remote processors no longer perform post selection. Uh, from what I understand, uh, the way that things had been rewritten, uh, the post selection functions posed a security risk, uh, something to do with serialization and deserialization. <laughs> Eric, oh, I think you yeah. want to dive in. Actually, a remote processor has never handled post selection uh, on the cloud side because we didn't have a solution for uh, for serializing a post selection function because it was too risky for us to let people write their own python code and send it to us without us being able to look what's inside so the change the previous change with uh, the, the the change of uh, names for, for set post process to set post selection is also a way of uh, implementing a new way of implement, implementing post selection, which 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 is not uh, a Python function, which would allow you to write any type of code, even malicious code that we would have to run on our uh, cloud, and we do not want to run malicious code on our cloud. So yeah, so remote processors uh, are not performing post selection, but they will because of the previous. Uh, uh, well, the, the previous uh, step is the, is the first step towards post selection in on the cloud. Okay, but as I understand it, they will return the full the full output distribution, and then uh, we can we can sort through that as we need uh, for our post selection results. Yeah, for now, if you need to do post selection, you have to do it on your client computer okay. afterwards after the acquisition. Voila, the more you know. Cool. So we're going to move forward. Um, are there any first of all cloud related questions actually because we're going to change gears and look at a bit of science news 10 or 15 seconds to type a question if you have one no okay i think we'll continue then so the science news which i have been hinting at is actually a humongous archive paper <laughs> that we have released uh, with all things Acela, uh, cloud um, algorithms, benchmarking. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more in detail in a moment. Um, but this was work done uh, by, well, across essentially all of the teams at Quandela. So there's a lot of names here. Uh, you might recognize some of them if you've interacted with us as people being from the engineering team, people being from the theory team the software team, the algorithms team, uh, even the management team. So there was a huge effort to, to write a, a somewhat all-inclusive paper about, first of all, about Mosaic, about Quandela and the way that you can interact with our machine. We have the archive link here, and there's also a GitHub link 
uh, to all of the code that was used to, to run the simulations and to run the actual uh, QPU algorithms. Uh, it's all available online so that you can do it yourself and uh, believe we're doing what we're doing and also modify it as you see fit for your own needs. The figure on the right, uh, we won't go through all of the details on it, but it's just to give you a kind of flavor of what the paper is. It, it really is a, a kind of beginning to end overview of Acela and what it does. Some of the things discussed in this paper uh, include benchmarking algorithms on one, two, and three qubit gates, so T gates, uh, CNOT gates, and Toffoli gates, all at about, well, at 86 to 99% uh, uh, fidelity. There's also a section on variational quantum eigen solving on molecular ground state energies of, uh, of H2 molecules. There is a section on photon-based quantum neural networks uh, for supervised learning and classification. So some of these concepts may be familiar if you've dug through our Percival documentation already, but they have been very much beefed up, optimized, and uh, explored much more thoroughly in this paper. Highly recommend uh, having a look at it, especially the appendices where all the interesting stuff is. Uh, we've also done boson sampling uh, with a record number with an on-chip record number of six photons and 90, 97% fidelity, uh, which is which is hard, which is very good. Uh, if, you're, if you're an experimentalist and that means something to you, I hope you are as impressed as, as I am. And uh, also the paper at the beginning does go through an overview of the hardware architecture, how the chip is controlled, uh, the demultiplexing, et cetera, uh, that all makes uh, the, the calculations possible. So please do have a look at this paper. Uh, it's been published on LinkedIn. You may have seen it. Uh, we published it on the archive. Uh, I don't know exactly where it's being submitted to right now or that I could even talk about it if I did, um, but it is. Uh, it really is a, a nice piece of work. And uh, I can only congratulate everyone who was on here who worked long hours to make this, uh, to make this paper possible. So uh, it's probably one of your best resources to get started using Percival and our machines uh, from a scientific perspective, if you if you have not already. And without further ado, the notebook demo. So I'm going to close my PowerPoint and switch over, and hopefully I don't lose everything. So voila, voila. Do we still see? Do we still see my screen? Can we see the cloud quandala panko? Yep, excellent. So what I've done here is I've just logged into the Quandala Cloud. If you've logged in before, which I believe everyone here has, this looks familiar to you. And you'll notice a new button on the left-hand side called Notebook. So we click on it. I've already loaded the notebook, so we're skipping a step here. Normally, when you click on Notebook, you have to uh confirm that you want to build uh that you want to create an environment at o on OVH's servers which allow you to run these notebooks so these notebooks are hosted through OVH uh, in our partnership with them and they are run on, on their computers so you do that and then you create a notebook we can see more information about the 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 computer the processor that we're actually running on so we're running on a two cpu eight gigabyte ram computer uh, the current Percival version is 0.8.1. Uh, it's because we've only released Percival 0.9 this past Monday. So the update to 0.9 uh, should be on its way. So you have the, the latest features that we've talked about. I've had this notebook open for a couple of days uh, to play around with it. And, uh, and voila, you can, see, uh, you can see some of your usage statistics. From here, just to give you a, a kind of look through, I already have one notebook open. We'll look at that in just a moment. But on the left sidebar, you see a whole kind of Jupyter environment. There is the Percival source code here that you can look at and modify or develop on or whatever you like to do with it. But probably more interesting for you, if you haven't used Percival before, if you haven't used the cloud before, would be the examples and the notebooks. So these examples come from the Percival uh, website, the documentation that you that you see on the Percival website. And the nice thing is that you don't have to copy and paste everything over into your own local notebook and worry if it's going to work or not, if you have the right packages. This is something that is taken care of by the OVH environments, uh, by the Jupyter notebooks that are online that you have access to. So we see a bunch of different 
notebooks here. The one that I've opened up is, is Qiskit because we've just talked about a few of the new Qiskit features, which are not featured in this notebook specifically, but it's short enough to get you started. And it, it behaves like you expect it to if you've ever used a Jupyter notebook before. So I had to pip install Qiskit uh, because it was not already available. So voila, that happened. And then from here, I run my notebook just as I like. I import the packages I need. I draw my circuits. Oh, there we go. I can see my input or I can see my output states. And then from there, I can build the, the actual circuit that's going to be implemented. <coughs> Excuse me. I can build the, the kind of high level abstraction of the circuit that will be implemented on the, on the processor. We talked about last week or last week, last webinar or the first webinar, I don't recall, about the transpilation process. So this is this is what you design as your algorithm developer. And then what actually happens is the chip transpiles this into something uh, over 12 modes uh, in a way that it can run it, uh, voila, voila, the details are scary and not worth discussing uh, at this webinar, uh, but this is, what it, this is what it looks like when you actually run it on the chip. And then you can uh, run your algorithm and you get the output states which you expect. So 101010 corresponds to the 000 output that we saw up here with the probability of one half as we expect and 010101, which again corresponds to the 111 output and our path encoding, uh, which has a probability of one half here. I recognize that there was a bit of technical stuff going on, um, but also a lot of you are technical viewers. So I hope you understood or could make sense of what we were talking about. And if not, like I said, this is the place to explore. Um, these notebooks are very handy and uh, we hope that, uh, that you can use them in a meaningful way uh, because uh, the software team and uh, the cloud team have been working on this quite a lot. So are there any questions about the notebook that we would like to ask before we move on? Any maybe clarifying comments from the other Quandela people here? Or I'll give you another few seconds to type if there's anything. Oh. Brian's on it as we speak. Yeah, I would like to mention that everyone, everyone who is at the, the webinar today, you either already do have access to the notebooks or you will as soon as the webinar is over. Um, so, so we're giving access to all of this uh, to you. And as always, if things break, send me a message, a kind one, please, and we will uh, forward that to the appropriate people and get that taken care of. Cool. Okay, we'll switch back over to the PowerPoint. We don't have a lot left. Uh, last bit is, is the Q&A, but I think we've been asking questions as we go. So we'll wait one or two minutes. If anyone has any bold comments they'd like to make, uh, or any questions they would like to ask, now is your opportunity. Well, now is not your only opportunity. If you'd like to email us, uh, me or anyone from the team, we are always available. Uh, but if there's anything you'd like to ask about, first of all, the events were com that are coming up, ways that you can engage with us, this is a moment which you can do that. We'll wait just one or two minutes to let that uh, go over and then we'll continue on. Hey, notebook is working, not just for me. That's good. The first time I used the notebooks, I had broken it because uh, I had used the previous beta version of the notebook and it was stored in my cache. And then uh, Mario from our development team was trying to do a demo of it and, uh, and it wasn't working <laughs> because it was pulling up stuff from my cache and he was very, very upset. Uh, but uh, that should not be a problem for any of you. Uh, it's all working now. Now, wait. For example, you have shown a Qiskit code how to generate a GHZ state. Do you manage to generate the GHZ state on all 12 qubits uh, and with what fidelity? Ooh, I do not know. Um, I will say that we have, when you say 12 qubits, uh, you need to be careful there. And as much as we have 12 modes, and, and perhaps I've abused the terminology as well, if so I apologize, uh, but we have 12 modes and six photons, 
Um, so because things are path encoded, we have one photon over two modes. So it's more like a six qubit um, processor uh, over 12 modes. That said, I do not know with what fidelity um, you can generate GHZ states, uh, GHZ states over the six modes. Um, but I imagine you could extend the Qiskit code quite straightforwardly to do so, um, which could be an interesting experience to uh, experiment to run. Sorry, I don't have a better answer with numbers though. One browser tab instead of minimally three. There we go. We'll put that on the tagline for the for the notebooks. <laughs> Cool. I hope that answers your question, Alexander. Um, feel free to email me uh, as usual if if you have any if you if you're working on the notebook and it's uh, it's not happening. Uh, I'm absolutely here to 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 help you get along with that. Okay. So I think with that we're going to oh, on the website. Sorry, we have another question here. Uh, on the website changes, we had some trouble accessing Quandela's and Quandela Cloud's website last week due to some automated IT tools flagging it as malware. Okay, uh, this is uh, Eric, sorry. Uh, I, I think we need, yeah, uh, well, it's very interesting for us. Uh, if you can also email us the, the name of your IT tools so that we know which database is blacklisting us, us it's, well, it would be great for us. But I promise you, we're not malware. <laughs> we're trying our best not to be. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Tago. Okay. Unless there are any more questions or concerns, um, feel free to keep typing if you already are. Uh, I would just like to. Thank everyone for joining us. It's been really nice to have the, the last webinar of the summer. They'll be restarting in, uh, in the fall, so something to look forward to. Oh, you said that the other folder is the Percival source code. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for joining us. I hope that was interesting. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at events. Uh, as always, contact us through the cloud supports or through email. And uh, do check out the GitHub if you would like to um, <laughs> one other team. If you'd like to uh, if you'd like to contribute to the source code yourself, it is a community project. Uh, we want this to be for everyone as much as we can. That's why we're hosting these webinars as well. So um, big thank you to you. Uh, big thank you to the whole team that came today and those of us who were not represented today. And um, from all of us, we wish you a most excellent summer. Thank you. <laughs>